in such a passion and emotion to the game when it's done in a in a natural way and unique way. Um, I think it's it's great, but uh, it's my opinion, and a lot of people maybe have something very different to mine. Yeah, they do, don't they? At times, um, in terms of Odegaard celebrating with the photographer Stuart's not just any photographer, is he? He's no, but that's something as, again that it happened there because there is a relationship that they do it every day here in the training ground um, as well. But people are entitled to to have their opinion when you do something publicly. Um, they're gonna be opinions, some of them positive, some one of them not so positive, and and that's our job to accept all of that and and then still behave like you think is the right way to behave, and don't lose that. Make sure we don't lose that. Just finally on that point, was it the fact that it was such a big win for you, it got you back in the title race? Do you feel that's why there was so much a celebration from you guys? Yeah, but we went to last year, or I see a lot of games, uh, on game three, game six, game eight, managers, teams celebrating a lot, fans celebrating a lot, and it's so tough to win in this league, and for sure it was a big match for us, and, and you can tell how much it meant from, from the whistle that you could sense the stadium and the atmosphere, very different already, so uh, it was a great day. I don't know why you've heard about the blue card rules yeah. I've ever talking about. It. Um, sin bins in football. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where we're going to get there, to be fair. I think we've got a lot going on now with, uh, with decisions, with um, technology, with what is coming. So I don't know if we are ready for that yet. Do you think it would be a good idea, bad idea? Mm. Who knows? Hopefully it's going to be tested <laughs> very, very well before we... We introduce it at this level. Just finally from me, we can talk about our favourite subject, VAR. Um, they have announced figures this week saying that 96% of their decisions are correct. There's been a 14% increase in correct decisions. They concede they've made 20 mistakes, one of which was a factual error. Considering the fact that you were on the end of a mistake, where do you think VAR are at the moment? Do you think they're in a good place? Or a bad place. Well, if they've done that analysis and um, and we see some improvements, that's a, a really positive thing to hear. That's for sure. That's what we all um, are willing to hear and, and what we expect. Do you think that there's a, ever be a time that we won't have VAR, or do you think VAR is the future? Well, that's not in my hand at the moment. It is, and uh, and we have to play with with those rules. And as those stats sh sh show, if, if that's going in the right direction, let's keep going. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Good afternoon. Um, West Ham this weekend. The defeat against them back back in uh, December was uh, the beginning of those three defeats in a row. What do you think helped you as a collective to bounce back from that negative momentum? Well, first of all, see uh, the reaction of the players, the reaction of the of the staff, our supporters as well, because uh, you want to be a certain team, um, but it, when you lose a match, if somebody wants to be different because you lost then we are not who we want to be or who we, who we say we are. And uh, what I saw is let's keep going in the same direction, uh, doing things better, more efficiently, and um, a result will come. And that's what we did. I want to ask you about David Moyes. Obviously, you, you played for him. You, yeah. It's not going to be the first time managing against him. What's the biggest challenge of facing a David Moyes side? Well, a really experienced manager that it's uh, extremely good at getting the best out of his team. And uh, he does it in various ways. He's extremely good at managing the group. He's a really competitive manager that that understands really well where to get an edge on a game and wait for the moments in the game to to punish you. And um, when you see his trajectory and what he's done at West Ham, is is incredible. Eventually, you didn't buy a striker in January, but if you look at the last three games, you scored 10 goals. This is the ruthless Arsenal you want to see offensively? For sure, and uh, and play with more and more aggression and, um, and scoring goals and... and uh, the amount of goals that we share in the squad, I think, is something very, very important, especially because we have lost big players as well um, this season for long periods, and we are still very competitive, and that's what we have to try to continue to do. I want to ask you about Calvin Phillips. Did you work with, at City? Uh, you worked with Pep as well for, for a few years. I didn't uh, work with him. Eh? Nah, no, I didn't, sorry. No, not with Calvin, I know, but, uh, ah, okay. um, but obviously you know how City operates, how Pep operates as well. Were you su how surprised were you with the fact that it hasn't worked for him, hasn't clicked for him at the Etihad? I don't know. I've got enough to <laughs> to make sure that the, our play is clicked and uh, that's something for them, probably. Sorry. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Hope you're well. Going back to the talk about blue cards and with all of the complications of VAR this season, do you think we're in danger of over-complicating over football in this country? 
Well, I don't know. Um, I think everything is being done with the intention to simplify it and, and make it more clear and um, and try to cut uh, mistakes or decisions that are extremely difficult to to make um, in a split of a second when it's talking about centimeters as well or millimeters sometimes. So hopefully everything is done to, to improve the game and if that's the case, let's go and try. Do you think it's unfair some of the coverage that Arsenal get because when you lose, you, you criticise for the way for, for, for losing a, a game that you maybe should win. And then when you do win a game like you did last week, you get criticised for maybe over over celebrating and for maybe people say that Liverpool weren't at that be- weren't at their best. I don't agree with that because in my life, what I heard in the last five days is all positive. So, is you want to hear more the negative part or the very positive part? And I think the. It was this much of positiveness and maybe a little bit of criticism. If you focus here, you only see that, depending on the perspective that you look at him. But I think it was extremely positive reaction from our people, um, media staff, other managers. I got so many tests every time I walk in the streets. It's pride and, and there is a lot of compliment to the team for what they did. So I don't have that impression at all. And focusing on the positives from last week, Gabriel Martinelli was actually in that, in that win. He's still only 22. Yeah. Are, you, are you excited about what, what more there is to come from him as well? Yeah, especially because he wants more. He's not satisfied. He's not satisfied when he does really well. He's not satisfied when you put him on the bench. <laughs> He's not satisfied after every training session. So only good things are going to happen to him. <coughs> And lastly, on Jorginho, who was so impressive last week as well, mm-hmm. his contract's up at the end of the season. Are you hopeful that he, he might extend that and stay here for a little bit longer? Well, I'm really happy with him, that's all I can say. Uh, the contract situation is more for, for Edu and, and the board to manage, but uh, his, his implication and, and um, the capacity that he has in, in big matches to affect the game is it's tremendous, and, and he was great against Liverpool again. That's great. Best of luck. Thank you. Martin, Hi, Hi. Um, just on Martin Erdegaard, I think in the past few months he's been playing really well from a playmaking perspective, but he's not been getting assists. Do you think even though he hasn't been getting the out, output of assists, it's quite nice that he's still been able to be appreciated as a playmaker um, because his, I guess his stats for creating chances and stuff like that are still very high? Absolutely, and uh, not only that, but his overall performances, uh, his aggression without the ball, um, the influence he has in our in our team every time we get to certain areas, um, the leadership skills that he's developing day in day out, and um, and his attitude, and he's always available. So I think he's having a great season. When you were a midfielder, do you think those parts of the game from the outside would have been appreciated as much as they are being done now? because, I guess, stats and stuff like that are more readily, readily available for us yeah. um, whereas they weren't before. Now, you know a lot about the players now and what they do and probably much more than before. Um, but as well, I think it's a, a very good source, but it's not on the only source to judge the performance of a player, I think. Okay. Um, last week you said Thomas's injury setback was just going to be a minor one. Um, mm. Is there any more of an update on that? And is West Ham going to be too soon for him to return? No, he's progressing really well, but um, it's a bit too soon to to tell you exactly when we're gonna, we're going to have him back. Similar um, for Jesus. Again, you said it was a, a minor injury for yeah. him before Liverpool. Any update on that? No, no update. Okay. And just finally on Jorginho. Um, I know you said the actual contract negotiation stuff is done by Edu, but just on a personal level, would you like to keep him going forward into this? I'm really happy with him, that's all I can say. And um, and when I we imagined um, what he could bring to the team and, and how he could make us better, he's doing exactly that or even better. That's it. Okay, last couple in the line, we're going to Aaron from Barnum. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Uh, your side are amongst the best in away form this season, but found it hard at the London Stadium. Is there a specific reason or way to get around that this time on Sunday? Yeah, there are certain reasons. First of all, they are a really good side and they are a really good side to beat at home as well. And um, yeah, we're going to have to be at our best to give ourselves the best chance to, to win the game. Hey, James from ESPN. Hi, Mikel. Just Hi. On this celebration stuff, do you, do you think there's any relationship at all between the way that a team celebrates at full time and their ability to go on or their maturity to be able to go on and win a title? Sorry, 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 can you repeat? So all this chat has been about, because 
some people feel that Arsenal over celebrated one win and that it somehow shows this kind of immaturity that they've not got the sort of bigger picture in their minds. But I, I guess I'm asking you, do you think there's any correlation between any team and how they celebrate one game at full time versus their ability to go and win a 38 game title? If I think when I have one Premier League somewhere else, the answer sir, would be big no. <laughs> Why? Because I have experienced it. That's it. So you can't, you know, so there is no correlation, is there? I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying there isn't. I'm saying my experience says no, but maybe someone says mine says yes. Okay. Mine says no because I've seen how to celebrate. Um, and just on Declan Rice, um, he also didn't get a great reception at West Ham when he went back last year. Presumably he won't get one again. I, I just wondered if you were surprised by that given everything he did for the club there. Well, it depends. And I, I always um, say, that uh, when you come back there is is very difficult because the, the opponents are focused on uh, on giving support to their own team, you know. Um, but as well, I've seen so much appreciation starting from the club when he left, what they did for him, the way people talks about him, and, and that's very important as well. And just finally, for me, can you tell us anything about Prince William or Tom Cruise? What do you want to know? <laughs> Everything. I can tell you about um, about the. Um, Dear Ambrose Charity and uh, and the work that they do and the amount of lives that they save and the amount of support and commitment that need uh, from all of us as well to continue to have that service that unfortunately the government cannot provide today and um, and we want to have a better city and a safer city because this can happen to any of us in any moment and I just feel the skin like this because I've seen videos that you cannot believe. Um, just support them as much as possible because uh, they are a life changer. And in these moments, you need someone with that expertise, and, and what they do is, is incredible. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to 10.30 tonight.